Welcome to my channel. This is Engaging Curiosity with me, Marian Busfield. I'm here to support new teachers with evidence-based classroom management strategies that you can start to implement today. Hello, teacher friends and classroom superheroes. Today, we're diving into seven easy ways to boost your classroom management styles. I have drawn these strategies from real classroom experiences and evidence-based um, strategies that I've learned about at conference and professional development classes. These strategies really do have the power to contribute to transformed learning environment. A classroom assistant once shared her admiration for the distinct presence each teacher in my former school brought to the classroom. Despite the way we all tweaked it differently, she did see a common thread linking how we communicate and carry ourselves as teachers. Today, the video explores some of these strategies that she saw in all of us. Let's get started by defining classroom management. Classroom management is about so much more than just keeping order. It is also about what the teacher does to create and maintain an environment that supports students' academic growth and also their social, emotional and moral growth. This means that our classroom management style is geared towards the development of the whole child. So classroom management styles or philosophies are not primarily focused on keeping order, but it is about keeping order with the focus on facilitating growth in all the areas that I've already mentioned. So what does your classroom management style reflect about your educational philosophy? In my case, a class should be engaging, curiosity driven. The students and the staff are supportive of each other. I want my students to build meaningful relationships and life skills that support ongoing relationships and personal success throughout their lives. That doesn't mean my classroom was chaotic. Well, maybe organized chaos a little bit. It does mean that I needed to implement a strong structure into the day, space and activities to allow, to allow for the fun, engagement, curiosity and chatty classroom community that I have. So I aligned my classroom management style with my philosophy. Now, what does that look like? Okay, so there are four main classroom management styles. Authoritarian, authoritative, permissive and indulgent. We're going to dig into a little bit on each one, by no means comprehensive, but a little bit. An authoritarian classroom management style is characterized by strict rules and expectations. Teachers who adopt this approach often use kind of a top-down discipline strategy with an emphasis on obedience and maintaining control. Although it ensures order, it can stifle student creativity and independence. So next up is the authoritative style. Teachers enforce the rules, but also encourage open communication and mutual respect. This balanced approach creates a more positive classroom environment where students feel cared for and are more likely to engage and take responsibility for their own learning. The permissive classroom management style involves fewer rules and allows students greater freedom to explore and express themselves. Although it can create a more relaxed environment or atmosphere, it may lead to challenges in maintaining structure and focus and this could potentially result in a lack of guidance for your students. And that can be especially hard on students who need that structure to function and support them in making positive choices in the classroom, leading to more behavioral uh, issues. So the indulgent classroom management style is often characterized by a high level of nurturing without stringent boundaries. Teachers who are indulgent may prioritize student happiness over academic um, challenges or rigor, that can sometimes lead to a lack of accountability in a student's academic performance. For students who are likely to learn without school, this might be a lot of fun, but could end up being frustrating or boring and because they don't feel challenged enough. Or And for students who need consistent support to learn, this can set them even further behind. Personally, I resonate with the authoritative style as it supports both discipline and student autonomy. Did I get it right every day? Absolutely not. But I kept my eyes on the prize, which helped me to get it right more often than not, and it worked. And over time, I became more confident and effective, and I was able to build fantastic relationships with my students, and we got to do 
so many wonderful things together. Because I did want a more open and uh, active classroom dynamic, my classroom management style and philosophy included strategies that communicated I was in charge, while also communicating that the classroom belonged to us all. For each of the strategies I'm going to share with you today, I will give you an example of a challenge that might come up in your classroom and then identify how this strategy may be used to support that challenge to kind of give you more of a sense of how the strategies work. This is not comprehensive. It's just to give you a bit of an idea uh, into how it might look in your classroom. Okay, so you for the first challenge for body language, you may be thinking, how can I maintain control in the chaotic classroom? By projecting confidence through posture and body language, you create a calming presence that commands respect and attention, helping regain and maintaining order. Another challenge you may experience in your classroom is, what should I do when my students seem overwhelmed or anxious? Okay, so maintain a calm and purpose, purposeful tone of voice can soothe anxious students, creating a more peaceful atmosphere that is more conducive to uh, teaching and learning. I'm not saying this won't be challenging at times, but the more you practice, the easier it becomes. So you're trying to build classroom community and you're just not sure that your classroom is as inclusive as you'd like it to be. You want to really dig into that. So how do I ensure students feel included and seen? So making eye contact fosters engagement, inclusivity, while allowing students to feel acknowledged and important. This increases participation and can also dis decrease disruptive behavior. So to give you an example from my classroom, we had during math an activity my students loved. After the instructional part of a lesson, we did some quick whole class practice before they grew up, broke up into groups to go on with their partner or independent uh, practice. So I posted a number of questions on the whiteboard and the students worked through them at their own pace. As they completed a question, they held up the answer on their whiteboard and I would say their name and make eye contact with my response. Activities like this ensure you connect with each child multiple times during a lesson. Now I will say this, I swore never in my life would I commonly say honey and sweetheart. When you're trying to remember all the names of all your students, sometimes you end up saying honey or sweetheart and that's where the eye contact is really important because they still always knew who I was speaking to because of the eye contact. It really works. You know, on Instagram recently, I've seen this meme where teachers get frustrated because they give the students instructions and then they get asked like 10 times, what pages, what am I supposed to do? What's our job? Now, there are a variety of reasons for this. I'm not saying there aren't, but you might want to check in and say, hmm, they are confused. How do I fix this? What can I check in on? Make sure you're delivering clear, concise instructions. This will minimize confusion, support an organized and focused learning environment. Um, and you might want to uh, post your instructions on the board. Sometimes it's writing a few notes so they know what to go to next. I know that in art class, I gave the lesson on how to do it. But honestly, I was teaching six and seven year olds for the majority of my last few years and they don't remember that many instructions. So I had um, I had done all the art in stages and posted up each state of the art project. So the first one would be the lines that were drawn. The second one would be the painting. The third one would be any cutting or gluing involved and then the final project. So clear directions. Yes, it took some time, but you don't have to prep it every year. You just have to prep it the first year. Um, so, and also remember storytelling, you know, kids love to ask questions and I can derail to tangents better than most people. This can be hard work for me. I get it. But if your students are often confused or asking others for instructions, it may be something for you to consider clear instructions. You may want to include some visuals and staying on topic. So disrespect is essential for everyone in the classroom, you, but also all of the students. 
And so the challenge might be that students often speak over me or each other. What can I do? Strategic pauses can quiet the room, refocusing attention and signaling the need for listening, helping to manage interruptions. So my favorite classroom attention getter is standing silently with my hand in the air, just like this. As the student notices my hands and quiets down, I thank them by name. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Caleb. Works like a charm. It doesn't have to be that involved, but it can be that involved. Sometimes I'll use my words, but often it's just saying, okay, remember your choices. Who are we listening to? Can everybody show me that we're listening to so-and-so? It's their turn now. Now, when you need to know how can I improve classroom behavior and student motivation? Now, there are all sorts of ways to um, work with that. There's no one answer to the question of classroom behavior or student motivation, but this is the first step for sure. Establishing strong relationships. This will nurture a sense of belonging and trust, and this will lead to more cooperative and motivated students. If students are in relationship with you and with each other, they are more inclined to participate well or show up for the partners or for you. Peer pressure works. Do you ever worry about what to do when students feel misunderstood or disengaged? So you can practice some active listening. This demonstrates empathy and respect. It will build more trust and help you to solve conflicts or miscommunications effectively. And to be honest, even if you don't get it right in the moment, do consider coming back to it. I had a rule in my classroom that if students, they had their cubbies and when they took off their inside shoes to put on their outside shoes, if they didn't put their inside shoes at the bottom of their cubby, uh, when they were out at recess, I'd grab them and take them to my desk. And all they had to do was go, oops, and come and say, do you have my shoes? And we would acknowledge together. And there was no great big scolding or discipline or consequence. Often they were so kind of like, oops, that it didn't happen all that often. Anyways, one day I had a girl and she was like a top, top student. And uh, she got embarrassed quite easily. And she was very popular but um, she was still a little shy. She was a bit of a perfectionist. So she didn't like to make mistakes much. So I had her shoes. So when she came up, knowing all of this about her, I'm giving her my biggest smile. And then she didn't say anything. And then I gave her a bigger smile. It's okay. Hi, how you doing? And all of a sudden she started to get. <gasps> and I was like, okay, this isn't such a big deal. Just keep smiling at her and is there anything you want to ask? So she thought I was teasing her. And um, eventually she asked me for the shoes and I kind of got her there, helped her get there. And she wandered away. And I was very puzzled because she looked so um, sad and upset. So I went home that night and I kind of thought, what was going on with her? And then I went, oh, I had such a big smile on my face. Did she think I was laughing at her? Because she is this perfectionist and she's very worried about all of these, you know, people laughing at her. Very vulnerable in that way. So the next day I called her into my desk and I said, hey, I just was thinking about last night because it kind of concerned me. I could see that you were upset. And um, did you think I was laughing at you? And all of a sudden, whoosh, the tears started and she acknowledged that she did think I was laughing at her. So I had an opportunity to explain to her, listen, I was just smiling because I could tell you were a little nervous. I wanted you to see that you weren't in trouble. It's all I was doing with my smile. There was no laughing at you. So in this particular situation, it was clear that there was a miscommunication and the listening didn't involve me getting her to, to say a lot. I went home and reflected and kind of went, oh, I know the student. So it relies on my knowledge of the student and my miscommunication to her and her inability to communicate to me. So this can look like all sorts of things, but the reality is because I've paid attention to her and listened to her throughout the year, it did um, solve the conflict and the miscommunication effectively. And as a note to that, at the end of the year, uh, her mother pulled me aside and her mother was not effusive with the compliments. Lovely parent, very helpful, very supportive, but not really effusive. 
And uh, so she said, <laughs> it's actually really funny because it was quite concise and then it was done. But she said, I am very grateful to see the independence and growth and uh, happiness in my daughter this year. And then we were done. There was no discussion. There was no more. That was it. But so this can really um, be an important one. So these strategies become some second nature over time. And more importantly, as you embrace them and become comfortable with all of them, uh, they will become more intuitive and authentically yours. But don't worry if you can't implement them all at one time. Solid classroom management can take times, even years. But meanwhile, it is improving all the time. You've got this. So what are your essential and effective strategies for effective classroom management? Share your thoughts in the comments. Ready to take your classroom management to the next level? Download my gift to you, the free classroom management checklist, to get you started on your path to better classroom management. Use the bit.ly link you see on the screen, scan the QR code with your phone camera, or find the link in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please join me once again. You will see some suggested videos on the right of the screen. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for joining. See you soon. Bye now.